Hey everybody, it's Dave. This is part two of the series that I'm calling Basics of Application Modeler. If you haven't watched part one yet, I'd suggest to go back and watch it. But otherwise, let's get right into part two where we're gonna talk about Application Explorer. Next, let's talk about Application Explorer. That is the left pane over here where you've got the elements listed and there's a search function to filter that tree of elements. And let's talk about that, but first we've got to get some elements over here. Make sure you have your Internet Explorer open and you are attached to it in from application modeler. So remember you can do this once you've set up application modeler to launch from an executable, then you should be able to click launch. And now we are attached to the application already. And you can see that by the launch button being grayed out. That should mean that you're attached. I'm going to go over to the left pane here and click on element one, which should be there by default. It may not have anything here, any details. It'll just kind of be blank. Uh, let's see if I do clear. Okay. So it should look kind of like this. I'm going to click identify and then go over here and I'm just going to spy any random old things. So we'll do the image there. I'm going to go back over, click add element, identify, pick another thing. By the way, I'm holding control with my left hand and clicking my left mouse button with my right hand to spy these fields. Back over to application modeler, add an element, click identify, pick another one, pick the button. Okay, add an element, identify, click the button. And there we go. We've basically spied everything on the page that is useful. Now this, we've been, just to point out, we have been using uh, IE HTML mode to spy this. If you just use the one that's by default here, we'll go back and change them to different other ones. But right now, what I want you to see is what it looks like when you have multiple elements. Now let's say that I noticed here that this search box has actually a couple of elements related to it. And I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So we go back up to element one, probably should name these things differently, but I think it was element two actually. <laughs> see, should have named it. Click highlight, and you'll see it's it's kind of highlighting the inner part. So I'm gonna respy this. Mm, actually, I'm gonna add a, a child. So I'm gonna click element two, click add child, and then click identify, and then I'm just gonna pick another nearby element. See how there's all kinds of different. These are different elements in the HTML, right? So I'm just gonna pick a different one. Let's go with like this one. So if maybe I have a reason for doing this, but what I want to show you is that whenever you spy these elements and they appear over here, you can put them as children to other elements and you could have child under child over child under child under child under child under child under child under child. Under child, under child. <laughs> um, this is completely non-functional. It, it, that is, it doesn't matter how you organize these elements. It does not affect the performance or the functionality of the object at all, as far as I'm aware. So you can put these elements in any groupings that you want to. You can put them as child children to other elements, however you want to. And I just want to be, make that clear. You don't have to worry about this organization. Organize this in a way that makes sense to you so that you can find things later. With that, let me talk a little bit about naming conventions for this. Let me delete all of these. Okay, so now we're back up to element one, two, three, four, and that relates to this picture, the search box, Google search, and I'm feeling lucky button. Um, I'm going to go over and name these how I've typically seen it named. I think Blue Prism suggests this too. Just quickly, you want to name it by like the type of element it is. Common ones are things like button, image, input text, whatever. So there's different types of elements and it really does not matter what you name it as long as it's clear to you and other people who develop on that object as well. IMG, right, for an image. So I'll just call this main image because that can change, right? It's not always a Valentine's Day image. And then the last thing I'll put is the spy mode sometimes. If I know that everything is in HTML, then I won't necessarily do that. But I know that I pretty much, I pretty much never make an object that's all one type of spy mode. And you'll see, it, you'll, you'll find that it can be helpful to identify that. I think Blue Prism suggests that as well, and I've continued it. I will also put other details at the end here if I find that that might be useful. So if there's a dynamic attribute in this, I might put the word dynamic like this. You know, um, It doesn't really matter as long as somebody can read it and know what it's referring to. Then I'll name element two TXT for text because that's that input text box. So I'll call it search and then HTML. Element three is going to be 
button, btn. You could spell out the word button, that's fine. Google search. Let's change this other one to search input so that it's clear. And Google search HTML. And the last one is gonna be kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna copy the text, and paste it into here. Just change this to I'm feeling felling. I'm feeling lucky like that. All right. And so now we have some, uh, uh, some basic elements, no real structure to the organization of this over here. Um, but if I had a more complex page, then I might split it up. So let's say that I wanted to split up the header. Looks like I've got header buttons and I've got footer buttons down here. Then I could create an element and drop all these into it. So drop it onto there, drop it on, drop it on here, drop it on here. Let's drag this out a little bit. And you'll see, this is why I name things like BTN TXT because it takes up space. And the more space you take up, the longer the name is, the more it's going to be covered up by the pane being so small. So um, I'll just name this like group uh, main or uh, let's see body or something. I don't know. And then I'll add an element and I'll call this header section. I guess I could have called this section group header. Add another element, call it group footer. And then inside these, I might create elements to identify some of these things that are what I'm considering the header of the page. So this is like a link, oh, whoops, LNK for link about HTML. And I accidentally didn't put that into the right section. So I'll grab it and drop it in there. The same thing for the footer, I might drop, uh, you know, some of these links into here as elements. And that's a way that you can kind of organize the page. Now, if you have multiple objects, or I shouldn't say multiple objects, if you have multiple screens, then you might want to further make this, let's see, click test object child, and I'll name this group, uh, like screen home page. And now I'll drop all of these sections into this because they're all part of the home page. And that way I can create other sections like maybe search results. If I were to perform a search, it would bring up the Google search results. So maybe that's a separate um, screen and then I can have groups underneath that and whatever. This is a tree so you can click on the, the plus and minus signs to minus those sections so that you can kind of drill down into only the sections that you want to see. Doesn't order these al alphabetically automatically it um, also is not gonna order these elements based upon where they are on the page. It's entirely up to you. And the way that it orders these is based upon when you added it into the group that it's in. So if I drag this I'm feeling lucky button, or let's, not, let's do a different one, this uh, search input out of that group, and drag it back in on top of body, it's gonna put it at the bottom. So let me just click okay, we'll go back into application model. Remember, I said periodically do that so we can save our changes. But you can see that the search input is still at the bottom of this group. And so it's just it's just tacking it down to the bottom. So if you ever get these out of order, then you'll probably just need to redrop them into the group. So I know that I want the Google search button to be at the bottom, so I'll drag it back on the body. Same thing for the I'm feeling lucky button at the bottom. So now it's organized in the way that I wanted it to originally. Same thing with the groups. If I want the header, because conceptually I see the header to being at the top, then the body being in the middle, and then the footer being at the bottom. I just, I'll just take this body, drag it onto screen homepage. It puts it below at the bottom. I'll move footer. And now I have my groups organized in the way that makes sense to me. So we just talked about organizing the elements over here in the application model in the tree and in the application explorer area. We've also talked about the naming conventions. This is a very simple naming convention, but it will help and it is actually kind of a standard. You just follow the standard of whatever place you're working at so that everybody else knows what to expect when they're looking at your application model. You'll notice that I used these nodes, uh, these elements as undefined nodes, undefined elements, and meaning that I didn't go over here and click identify and click on anything. You don't have to make and the, you don't have to make every single one of these actual elements in the web page. You can just use them to group other elements together. And there's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, it's actually beneficial, maybe a small benefit, but 
each of these that are empty, they don't take up the space required to you know hold all the data that would be held about this. So there's a bunch of attributes about these elements that it saves for each one of these. And so if you have this empty, then it's not taking up that space. And so the XML, you know, the file, the code is all going to be a little bit smaller, maybe just a little bit, but it is a little bit smaller. Let's go add just a few notes about each of these. And then I want to show you the search functionality in the application Explorer. I'm going to click this about link. And then let's say I put a description here, like, uh, this is the worst ever. Don't use it or something. And then in this, uh, main image element. I say this changes all the time. Uh, search input static, and maybe I maybe I put the word static here, and I say static here because I've tested over time. I found these are very static, but maybe like these elements aren't. I don't know. This is honestly just an example. I have never put those words into the description of elements before. Uh, let's see here. We can't put a description into the groups into an undefined element. That's interesting. Okay. So what I want to do now is let's say I have a huge list. Actually, matter of fact, I can, I can probably mimic that. So let me copy this entire screen paste here, drag up. Okay. We'll paste here. Just drag it up. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, kind of mimic or mock up like what it might look like if you had a bunch of elements. And it can go, you know, this could be a, a long, 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 long scroll. If I wanted to search for specific elements, does the Google search button already have an element for it? So I can go up here and just type Google search, hit enter, and now it'll bring up all the elements that have the words Google search in it. And in this case, it brought up several elements because you saw I copied a bunch of the elements and pasted them again. So these are all duplicates of each other, but you would be able to use this and kind of go, okay, so let me, uh, let me look at the attributes. Is this what I want to use? And then you go to a navigate stage and you go select that element that you wanted. Oh my goodness. I just realized that you can search in application Explorer from inside of a navigate stage. I have never noticed that before. Google search. Wow. See, you learn something new every day. I have I don't know how many times I've looked in a navigate stage and never noticed that. Okay. So anyway, that can be really beneficial then. So Google search, I know that that's what I'm looking for. I can search for it and then goodness gracious, that is really useful. Drag it over into here and then, you know, pick like click center or whatever, but you can do that application search from inside of application model or apparently now I know in a, what else can you do that? And let's see in read stage. Can you, oh my gosh, <laughs> let's all pretend like I already knew that. That's really awesome. I'm definitely going to start using that. Uh, cause when you get to have a lot of elements, it gets to be kind of painful to find which one it is that you need. And that, that's a quick way to narrow it down. So the other thing to note here is that there are certain places within the definition of the element that you can search and certain things that you can't. So if I type static, hit enter, you'll see that it worked, right? I was able to search for the word static. Um, let's put on, let's see, what was the one? Let's see. I, I put the worst ever. So let's, let's search for the word worst. All right, so it just brought up this element, right? I have it duplicated, so it's here multiple times. Um, you can also search for words that are inside of the values of various attributes. So if I go down here and find one that's kind of particular, okay, about. So let me search for about. All right, um, wait, let's search for something. Here we go, okay, something random. So there you go. So it searches and shows, brings you to an element that has um, that element in it somewhere. doesn't tell you exactly where it is, but you can assume it's probably in the description or the name of the element or in one of the values. Something I want to no point out to you specifically though, is that you can't search for like the name of attributes. So I can't go in here and search for like class name and then it bring up the, all the elements that have an attribute called class name. I also can't search for anything that's inside of the, the notes. So there is a notes tab here that I'm sure nobody uses. Um, I have typed notes in here before, but I got to tell you, this is a worse place to put notes. If you expect somebody to see it, probably be a good idea to type in this description up here. Like, Hey, there's stuff in the notes, but anyway, I can type some stuff here, random stuff. So if I search the word for the, for random stuff in the filter tree, it's not going to find any elements. 
So if you're wanting it to be searchable through application explorer, filter the tree input, make sure you put it in description if you're trying to you know explain something or whatever. Thanks for watching this part two of the series Basics of Application Modeler, where we've learned about Application Explorer and the fact that I was super surprised that you can use that in Navigate Stages and Read Stages. So that will lead us right into now to get into the really the bones of Application Modeler next time where we go into HTML spy mode and some best practices that I have to suggest.